Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, you think I don't know? I know there's Brazilian hair, there's Indian, there is where? Peruvian. Peruvian. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody says A. I know. I know, I know. Even if my wife doesn't wear, I know. I still know. Hallelujah. And some come to church. You know, come to church. Look, this guy climbed the tree because he wanted to see Jesus. Because he's heard about him. But he didn't know him. He didn't. So, and Jesus knew his heart. And Jesus knew the price he had to pay to see him. To the extent that a wealthy, maybe millionaire, billionaire, whatever you want to say, will want to climb a tree to see Jesus. You don't want to make any sacrifice. Because you have become too familiar with him. You don't want to pay. You see, eh, but you see, when I pray, he has to answer. Because I come to church. It doesn't mean anything. This man, look at the two people. This one was really ready. That one didn't climb a tree. He just went to Jesus and was a good teacher. You see, what what must I do? I've heard you saying some things. Uh, So me too, what must I do to get there? Jesus said, go and be, oh yeah, but that one I've obeyed. So I'm already there, one leg there. He says, go and sell everything. He ran away. This one, I want you to see. This one, he knew he didn't know Jesus. He knew it, but he wanted to see him. And he was desperate. Every door was closed. Every avenue was closed. But he still wanted to see Jesus. He said, ah, he didn't complain. God, why did you make me short? You will have complained. He did not complain. God, why did you make me short? You see, this time that I want to see Jesus too, you see, you made me short so I can't see him. He did not allow that to stop him. He still devised the means. He said, okay, even if I am short, there should still be a way. God, why is the way? Then God dropped a thought in his head. Go and climb that tree. Jesus is going that way. So he went. A rich man. I can imagine Zacchaeus, short rich man, climbing a tree. Climbing a tree. Climbing a tree. I won't say. But climbing a tree. Climbing a tree. Climbing a tree, climbing a tree. Then he got to the top. Go to the next verse. When Jesus, when Jesus reached that spot, hallelujah. Listen, I say Jesus knows everything. Jesus didn't have to do this. Even when he was really running around trying to find the means, Jesus knew. So when he climbed the tree, Jesus was settled in his heart. This guy is serious. So when he got there, hallelujah. I want you to see a massive difference here. What's the name of the rich man, the rich young ruler, who has obeyed everything? He was in church. Jesus didn't know his name. Even if he knows, he didn't mention When Jesus read the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I said, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. Let me tell you something. Change your mind today. Stop writing people off. Even you, Jesus didn't mention your name, but he called Zacchaeus by name. Everybody thought he was a bad man, a a, a wicked man, a a tax collector. He was evil, but Jesus knew his name. And he mentioned his name. Jesus didn't mention the one who said, I have obeyed everything. Jesus never mentioned his name. So till today, we don't know his name. We don't know his name. All that we know is that he was a ruler. What was he ruling? We don't even know. But with Zacchaeus, we know his name. Even though he was a tax collector, even though in your mind, God doesn't care about him because he's a sinner, God knew his name. You see, there are people on the streets over there, you've written them off. This one, he doesn't count. That one, he doesn't count. But I'm telling you, you are making a big mistake. When they get onto their bed, you don't know the kind of 
cry, they cry. Sometimes they don't like what they are doing. But they don't know how they can come out of it. They need you. I am telling you this. And many of you who were with us at uh, uh, downstairs, you know. We met this girl. She was at the Barclays Bank. I was with Kujo and Mami. I was going to um, take money, the ATM. At night, we came to pray. At that time, we were very, it, it was the first year of the church. We went there. We had finished praying. We went there. I, I got down to take the money. I was driving. Mami was sitting at the front. Kujo was at the back. So when I got down, I went to take the money. When I came, there was this girl standing by the roadside with that small bag, and everybody knows what he was doing. So when I came, Mommy and Kujo were saying that, it's sad, look at this nice girl. I said, have you spoken to her? They said, no, I called her. I said, come. Then she came. Initially, she didn't know there were other people in the car. She thought she's got a job. <laughs> so she came. When she came, she stood at my side. I looked at her and I said, do you know Jesus loves you? She looked at me and then looked into the car and she began to cry. She began to cry. And I told mommy, I said, mommy, do you know what you have to do? Get down and hug this woman, this young lady. So mommy got down and embraced her. And her tears was wetting mommy's shoulders. She was crying. That same night, as we came to the hotel here to really find a room for her because we didn't have any plan. We didn't know where we were taking her. So we came here. Immediately, Kujo said, oh, let's call, you know, my late driver, Ima. So Kujo called him and he had a place in his house. That same night, we gave her a place to live. That same night. We gave her a place to live. And the next day, I asked her, why were you crying? She said, you don't understand. And I said, why? What is it that I don't understand? He said, there are nights, somebody will pick you, go and sleep with you after that, where he will leave you. You have to walk. Because not that there's money in your hands, but there's no car at that unholy hour. And the person is not ready to take you where he picked you. He said, I will walk. And those days, there were days people were dying. People were, And he said, the moment you said that, I started thinking about things I have gone through that I haven't died. And I knew indeed God loved me. Amen. Yes. And this was a, you know, you see, sometimes we write them off, engage them. There are some, you do, it doesn't matter what you do, they will still go. But make the effort. Because sometimes Jesus sent you purposely into their life. Because they've been crying to Jesus and Jesus sent them to you. Do what you have to do. Don't fail Jesus. Do your part. If they don't want it, you've done what you have to do. Hallelujah. So Jesus looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. I thought this was a bad man. I thought this was a wicked, evil man. I thought this was somebody that nobody cared about. That he's the last person anybody considered would go to Jesus. But he accepted Jesus. And look at what happened. All the people saw this and began to mutter. He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. What has that got to do with you? What is your business in that? Do you decide where Jesus should eat? Should you come to your restaurant? That filthy restaurant. The restaurant you think it's nice, but Jesus doesn't even want to step there. Jesus is ready to go to a sinner's house if the sinner has a heart to receive him, than to go to a self-righteous man's house 
where he thinks he's right, but everything in the house was stolen. That's him. You see, you, you, you have lived your life in such a way that you think Jesus, I mean, every, oh yeah, but I've got a new car. I've got a, Jesus doesn't want to sit in your car. He will walk. He will rather walk than sit in your car. How did you get a car? That is why he says, you corrupt generation. How did you get it? You're cheating on everybody. You're doing everything. Even your offering, it is because you want a position in the church. You don't give. You see, people come to church, they don't give an offering from their heart to really honor God. They give an offering because they want to be recognized. And Jesus doesn't like that offering. You are wasting your time. You are wasting your time. So they are struggling every day because the church has made them so. We, the pastors, we have made you so. Last time I said, I said somebody came to church looking for God with a clean heart. When he comes to church, we make him bad, a bad person. Because when he came to church, we never spoke about how he can live holy life. But he was, that was what he was desiring. All that we said was that you have to get rich. And he said that so many times. And instead of he really finding in church how he can walk right with God, he came to church and he found the seven steps to be rich. Let the financial schools teach that. Hallelujah. Let's teach the people how they can live holy. And in the Bible, Matthew 6.33, God says that he will sort out the rest. Let's stop what we are doing. Hallelujah. But that's it. That's it. But Jesus is looking differently. So instead of the, they did not do anything for this man. They did not invite Jesus. They did not struggle to see see Jesus. But Jesus saw someone whose heart was yearning to know him. And it doesn't matter where he lives. How he got the money. He's ready for a change. He's ready for a change. And I want you to see what happened? Move on. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. Now, listen. Did Jesus ask him? But the self righteous man, Jesus even asked him, Go and sell and give to the poor and come. He said, No. The self righteous, Jesus told him, How many times have Jesus told you stuff and you didn't do? But there is somebody out there. He's seeking to do it. Jesus told the man. He said, go, sell. This guy doesn't even know what eternal life is. Zacchaeus didn't know. But that one knew. So he came purposely for that. But when he was giving the instructions, he ran away. But Zacchaeus, he didn't wait for Jesus to say anything. He opted to give his riches to the poor. Because you see, that guy, that rich man, had not encountered God. He came out of who he is, big man. Came to Jesus. Zacchaeus came as wretched as he is. When he saw Jesus, he saw that what he had had no value. Because the value of knowing Jesus supersedes the value of billions of dollars. Do you know why you don't value Jesus? Because you don't know who he is. So you think having money is knowing Jesus because he's blessed you. Remember, in the temptation of Jesus, what did, the, what did Satan say? He said, if you bow down to me, I'll give you everything. Satan can give stuff. And he gives stuff. So ask yourself, how did you get it? Hallelujah. Amen. Beloved in the Lord. <laughs> and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. You're calling me a bad man. But I'm ready 
whatever you think I have cheated you, come to me. Tell me what I've cheated you. I'll pay you four times more. I don't know whether they came. I don't know whether they came. Hallelujah. Listen. When you are desperately seeking for God, it doesn't matter. I said it doesn't matter. And when you see him, you see that he's worth more than anything. When the reason many of us are chasing money more than God is we don't know him. The rich young ruler didn't know him. That is why when he called him good master, I said, why do you call me good? You don't know me. You say something. You don't know me. That was what, what Jesus meant. You don't know me. But he didn't say that to Lazarus. No. Hallelujah. Let's go to, let, let's go. Jesus said to him, today, 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 Let salvation walk into your house. Amen. Let salvation walk into your life. Amen. Because when salvation comes to you, the old is the new. So the guy, when he encountered salvation, he realized that money couldn't buy it. So money should go. Hallelujah. Amen. Look. I want you to begin from today to get out of your minds the desire to be rich by all means. Get it out of your mind. Yeah, but this pastor, he doesn't want his church people to be rich. You heard the testimonies today. Big testimonies of prosperity. God blessing his people. What did they do? Nothing. He doesn't need you to do that. What he needs you to do is to pursue him. You saw the sacrifice and you saw uh, Regis' sacrifice. I mean, he didn't even go to that part of his sweeping the church and everything with his coat. Scrubbing. You see Reggie with a mop. Or with a, a, a broom. Sweeping. In the past he wouldn't do. So he didn't see this blessing. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Next time when you are sharing that testimony, add everything. When you wanted to run away and you went and then uh, God told you to come back and sweep. Yeah, he went to his car. He started his car. He moved. He was going. God said, have you finished sweeping the church? God asked him. God, uh, okay. Okay, I'll go. Then he came. You see, the, the irony of it is that sometimes we think God is blind. <laughs> he came back, walked around here, tried to, he thought he had done something. Got down again, went to sit in his car, moved the car again, was going. God said, did you finish? Have you finished what you were supposed to do? No. Go back. He drove back to the church, came. Finished everything. Did you ask Jesus before you go down? You went down. Yeah. Ask Jesus whether now he's satisfied. You were now at peace. You, you knew you were not running away now. Okay. So now he went. He started the sky. Jesus didn't say anything. Jesus smiled at him. And then he drove home. And then Jesus spoke to him. And he said, if you do mine, I'll take care of you. From that day, 
the one who kn- did not know that there was weekday services in this church. <laughs> now get here before everyone else. <laughs> if salvation comes to your house, the old days, the new life has begun. So when he encountered him, when God began to speak to him, God was telling him that you can't cheat on me. And he began to do what God wanted him to do. And now, he doesn't have to, hello, so if we don't call you, you won't call us. No, I won't call you, but Jesus will call you. I have a lawyer. His name is Jesus. If I don't call you, in fact, if you have a case and you have a good lawyer, you don't have to make the calls. He makes the calls. But you don't, you know, he didn't pay anything. He swept church. Yeah. So you need to understand what God is asking you to do. What is God asking you to do this morning? Maybe you have to go and climb a tree. Maybe you have to give up something. What are you willing to give up? What are you willing to give up? Hallelujah. The person that people wrote off, now Jesus said, today salvation has come to this house because this man too is a son of Abraham. Let everybody call you whatever they want to call you, but let God call you differently. Everybody can say what they want to say. Don't let it influence you. Don't let it get you angry. You can come to church. People will say that you, that you are a bad person. Don't worry. Pursue Jesus. Amen. Jesus did not come for people who think they are saved. He came for people who know that they are sinners. People who know they are lost. And they need Jesus. And nothing matters to them. All that they want is to know him. So desperately, they are pressing on. Some are climbing trees. Some are really trekking long distances to go to church. You are in Accra. And you sometimes say, from your house to church will take you 10 minutes. And you can sit home and say that I don't have trot money, so I won't go to church. When you can, if you walk 10 minutes, you'll be in church. Probably maybe 20 minutes. Go to the village. There are people walking hours to go to church on a Sunday. Because they don't live anywhere close to town. And where they live, there is no church. They live on their farms. And they, to, the nearest town is probably 10 miles away. And it takes them more than an hour to walk that distance. Yet they go to church. You sit at home. I don't have two cities for transport. Why did God create you with two legs? What are you using them for? But if somebody tells you, the same person who didn't have money and therefore couldn't walk to church, the next day will walk probably, 10 minutes he couldn't walk to church, the next day he will walk 30 minutes or probably an hour to go to the office. What is wrong with us? How many of us really want to encounter him? How many of us are saying that we want to know him, but we don't want to pay the price? How many of us? Why are you here? Why are you sitting in church? What is your reason for coming here? Tell me this morning, why are you sitting here? Who is he to you? Do you know him? Have you encountered him? Are you desperately searching for him? What sacrifices are you ready to make? So people will say that you are going to church, so you have to hide your Bible. Many people, the reason they don't hold Bible anymore is people will see that they are holding Bible. So they want it on their phone. 
I'm not saying having it on your phone is a sin. No, it's not a sin. But be proud of who you are in the Lord. If you don't know him, seek him today. There are people, they can't even take a bold step to say that I give my life to the Lord. They want a secret. Zacchaeus went to climb the tree. People saw him. Jesus called him. He didn't say, Jesus, why are you doing this in public? He didn't care. He got down. He went to Jesus. He took Jesus home. People spoke against it. Let people speak against you. Let people say all kinds of things against your relationship with Christ. Do not worry about it. They are not the ones who are going to judge you. Let the one who judges the rich and the poor, who judges the living and the dead, let him approve you. Let everybody say what they want to say. Seek him. I don't know how desperate you are. Zacchaeus didn't care what he was losing. What was important to him was to know him, was to see him. So he will climb the tree. He will give everything he had. He just really need that encounter. If you need that, you would have to make some decisions this morning. Nobody has to beg you to give your life to Christ. Nobody has to beg you to recommit to him. Yes, you thought you know him. You thought, but you see, you've not made any sacrifice. But you want to make a sacrifice this morning. You want to make a decision this morning.